Welcome to the final episode of Demol Belgium Greece Recaps from Reality TV Warriors, where everyone wins except for the listeners. My name is Michael Holmstone, and joining me live from his home is the Canadian who said that Alina was the mole this season almost as much as Papa Bear and Alina did themselves, Logan Saunders. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and after seven long weeks, we now know for certain, even though we've basically been saying it all season, that Alina is our mole. My record's intact. Yay! And my record is somehow actually decent. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, you, re- you rebounded from last la- We've uh, You got the Vida Mole this year and the Belgian Mole too. Yeah, seeing as though this has been obviously the week when we've been thinking, oh, we should be in Belgium this weekend. I've been thinking back to last year's finale and you completely dropping me in it with Bass and going, Michael suspected you. He thought you were the most suspicious and he's like, fuck off, Saunders. <laughs> I don't know why that's the most vivid memory of that night for me at the moment. I don't even remember saying that. <laughs> you actually said it on the podcast that we released. It's like, Bass asked uh, who we suspected now, and you were like, I suspected Eliz- Elizabeth all from minute one. Look at me, I'm a good boy. And Michael suspected you. <laughs> and then it got super awkward. So we're going to begin, as always, with our corrections. There is two this week, actually. We've done quite well last week. We have a full year to learn Flemish. Chop, chop. Dear Lord, this season has been so odd for us just because we've been doing unsubtitled episodes, but the first one that we got in was from Levi on Facebook. Within, I think I messaged you that it was 92 minutes. It was a really fast one this time. And he said that it wasn't smelly cheese in Jolene's pastry last week. It was actually garlic, which explains the crunching noise. (laughs) And then we have a very last-minute um, set of corrections from um, Gilles de Costa. He listened? He listened. I sent him an email this evening, and I'd say within about half an hour, I got an email back off him. Really nice. I'm not going to go into the entire email, but he did actually give us some corrections, so I'm going to go through them as well. So he said that Jolien is actually pronounced Jolene like the Dolly Parton song, so we've been wrong for seven weeks on that. I was about to, I was about to say that... Um, when they do the final quiz with the three of them, and he says, Jolene, like, wow, we fucked up her name the entire time. Because uh, we, was it, so it's Dorian and Jolene were pronounced the same. Yeah, I swear that they've been saying Jolien all season. Because <laughs> in the first episode, didn't I say the same way and then you kept correcting me? Yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty confident that for the entire season they've been saying Jolien. I think maybe... My theory is that in the first episode, they were calling her Julianne, and then by maybe like episode two, three, or four, they started saying her name uh, correctly, but because Doreen was in the game for such a long time, we probably just thought, oh, they're just talking about Doreen. <laughs> so weirdly, we've had two sets of Tunnel Vizzy this year. We've had Alina as the mole, and then... Jolene as being pronounced Jolien. So I apologize to Jolie slash Jolien if you have been listening and we are pronouncing your name wrong. I know that you wouldn't have been able to actually tell us this, but I apologize wholeheartedly. <laughs> so that means that there was this mystery 11th contestant who entered the finale named Jolene who beat out Bart and Jolien on the final quiz. Maybe in the same way that Malice is Salim's evil twin, Jolene is actually Jolien's evil twin. <laughs> <laughs> it just all makes sense. Well, I guess when you think about it, too, the contestants aren't going to be, when it's just a group of two or three of them for a challenge, they're not going to be saying each other's names that frequently. No. And the other correction that he wanted me to make was actually when he signed off the email by saying, please find me another nickname other than Papa Bear. <laughs> okay. And I don't think he knows how difficult that's going to be, for reasons that we're not going into for this week. <laughs> Anyways, so on to the first the first challenge. So, previously, Christian and Alina went shopping, or should I say shoplifting. Bart and Jolene ran the last part of the Spartathlon to save the thieves from being shot by arrows, but a bad defence left Christian exposed. On a train ride for the final exemption, Jolene took it, but regretted her decision. She also got to interrogate the rest, but it didn't save Christian from being the final victim of the mole. And we open in Patchy on the day of the finale. This is where Papa Bear's Greek promo shot was taken, and I'm re- I have obviously written these notes before reading 
Gilles' email, so it's going to be super difficult not to call him Papa Bear. This is where Gilles' Greek promo shot was taken. It flashes back to Pandora's box in episode 2 and some terrible CGI to show the mole's name card flying out of the box. And the card lands in the water by the yacht where the final test is taking place. And I am going to keep taking the piss out of this CGI because it is a rare misstep in this wonderfully produced program for it to be so bad CGI-wise. At least they didn't have like a shark come out of the water. Like Jaws 4 CGI. It didn't, and I get that they wanted to make it kind of a cinematic thing and link it back to the final shot and stuff, but making it look like a Harry Potter letter probably isn't going to work in this case. Should have been more like the feather from Forrest Gump. Yeah. And obviously, with the plates, we finally see Hetinder Omega, which we've been waiting forever to see. Day 17 opens with a scene in Nathlio set to Goldfinger. I need to remove Papa Bear from my notes right now because I'm going to keep calling it purely on autopilot. Bear with. I like how he tells you to stop calling him Papa Bear and you have it written down like 30 times in your notes. Well, the problem is, I wrote these notes before I um, before I read Jill's email, so it is entirely written with Papa Bear or PB as initials, purely because I'm doing this very quickly. So I'm now going to have to actually find and replace all Papa Bears with Jill. Host. And for the record, it was only 10 autocorrects there. So it does open with the scene, sets a gold finger, and Jill announces the beginning of money time. He's looking for two candidates who like to spend money, and one who would like to save it. And for some reason, despite the fact they both suspect her, they let Alina save the money. There's a strategy to this, I think. There is, but also if she's your mole, you have to keep an eye on her now. You do not leave her alone in a challenge where it's going to be a 2-1 split. However, I do. I think the strategic thinking here is that Bart and Jolene, how... They're trying to make each other think that they're the mole, so they want that other person they know who isn't the mole to be with them to create that suspicion. Because if they're away being the solo person, there's no way to create that doubt heading into the final quiz. No, but as they find out quite quickly, this is a challenge where they can get money taken out of the pot. And they've left both of their moles really unattended to wreak havoc. Because this is a very difficult challenge for any contestant to win. It's one of the rare challenges that I would say that it's pretty much impossible for contestants to win. Especially if it's a final three and the mole is alone. This is what I mean. As soon as you leave Alina alone and you know that she's the mole, you're basically condemning yourselves to um, to a lot of money coming out of that pot. I mean, or maybe it was actually genius for Bart and Jolene because then they it's like, well, we already know who the mole is. We know we're going to lose this challenge. So let's just live the most extravagant and luxurious lifestyle for the next couple hours. Let's bathe in perfume. Yeah, bathe in perfume. Let's try and get a a massage with a happy ending. Let's um, let's have some a really good bottle of wine and the most the fanciest caviar laden dish we can have. Um, Maybe we'll buy a solid gold chandelier. Uh, Yeah, just I mean. They just want to have a little bit of fun. Do you want to live it up, having a massage and walking the streets of Naflio, swigging uh, a bottle of champagne, or do you want to leave the mole alone? <laughs> and Naflio is apparently Greece's Saint-Tropez, and Alina will spend her afternoon in an exclusive hotel. She enters a room with lots of old Greek drachmas, and must spend her afternoon counting them. Whatever she counts has to be exactly what Bart and Jolene spend, at a rate of 34 drachmas per one euro. If it is, then what they spend will be added to the pots. If it isn't, then what they spend will be taken from the pots. The drachmas in Alina's room total exactly the same amount as the pot does at that moment, 22,235 euros. Are, are, they're, not, they're not legal tender, are they? Not anymore, no. No, it got replaced by the euro in like 2001? 2001, yeah. I was about to say about 20 years of euros. 20 euros. Which actually probably makes it more impressive that... Um, that the production crew could find that many drachma. Maybe it's more like uh, prop money that they were able to print off. Given that, um, by a quick estimate there, it's 756,000 drachma was in that room. It's a lot of drachma. That's a lot of drachma. That's why I'm thinking they might have been printing it themselves. Yeah, 2002 the drachma was replaced by the euro, by the way. 
But I guess it's not a super long time for it to be out of circulation. Maybe they were able to get a hold of it somewhere. Yeah. What I would have loved is if just behind the camera there was a uh, a security guard or something just watching over the drachma, making sure Alina didn't pocket any. Well, there's you can't use it, right? No, but that is a lot of drachma. <laughs> it's a collector's item now. Yeah, if I guess for collector's items, yeah. You want this worthless currency? How much do you want to pay for this worthless currency? Thank you for giving me currency that's actually worth money. Now here's this worthless currency that's worth nothing. <laughs> the important thing here is the fact that there is enough drachma in that room for Alina to completely drain the pot, in theory. You know, would even do a worse job than, you know, Bart, Bart started the drain at the beginning of the season, and then at the end, Alina could finish it. And Bart and Jolene are given Jill's MasterCard, unlike Probe's Visa card, and a phone. They're also given a website address, which is countmydrachmas.be, which, obviously, if you see a website address, what's the first thing you do in the same way that when we saw the Moles phone number in uh, Mexico, what did we do, Saunders? You either call it or you enter it in. Exactly. You look it up first to see whether it's still live, which it isn't, and then you look up who owns it. And the answer is completely anonymous because they've paid the extra money to actually anonymize the um, the details. It is instead registered to a web hosting company called Combell. The fact that it was .be means it was definitely set up by production then. Oh yeah, it, it's definitely been set up in Belgium because Combell is um, is a Belgian company. Believe me, I did far too much uh, research on this uh, this afternoon. But yeah, I thought I'd just see if they were lax enough to not put uh, the anonymous on the who is details. Sadly, they were. <laughs> they had room in their budget for it. Yeah, sadly, they paid the extra five euros or whatever to anonymize it. <laughs> so on the website, they can see Alina counting the money. They can also ring the big red telephone in her room. If she doesn't answer after two rings, or if the call lasts more than 10 seconds, the fans that surround the table will begin to blow and all the drachmas will go everywhere. And Alina mimes to them on the camera, but then doesn't pick up when they actually ring her. It's like she's the mall. Yeah, it's almost like she knew there was a camera at the top of the room, and she was just trying to mess it up as much as possible. And Bart and Jolene begin by going champagne shopping, at which point Alina doesn't answer the phone again. And anything they buy that is consumable, they have to consume before the end of the hour that they have to spend the money. Was it the first mall Australia that did this challenge? I know I've seen it before for sure. It is a classic mole challenge, definitely. They obviously have never done it with the uh, the drachma blowing everywhere, but spending money and then having it balanced out is a classic mole challenge. Yeah, like especially when you have to try... Like The perfume was one of the dumbest things to buy, because it's like, you have to try and get through that whole, whole bottle. <laughs> two whole bottles. Two whole bottles. They bought two, and they're probably not um, not compatible smells. So Jolene probably stank that day. So this is where it just gets ridiculous. Uh, they then decide to rent a boat as they've got 500 euros spare and agree to pay for the free champagne that's included in it. So they're going <laughs> to yeah. shit-faced by the end of this challenge. And Alina spells out the word bell in... Um, in drachmas, and they only realise when they're in the middle of the ocean, and she has at that point counted 1,441 euros, but they've only spent 670. And when they get back on dry land, they try and get a quick 10 minute massage. No, not the sort of quick 10 minute massage Bart usually asks for, and ask for the most expensive thing they can do in 10 minutes. It's funny, because for Bart, with this this massage, he doesn't he doesn't end up with a happy ending. And once the final quiz and reveal is over, that's not a happy ending for him either. Oh, imagine if we were in the press room when this scene was on, with Bart and Jolene walking into the massage parlour and asking for, and I quote, the most expensive things you can do to us in ten minutes. (laughs) I think that's a couple blocks away. (laughs) That's in the seedier part of Nathlio. (laughs) That's the the Omega. (laughs) This is the end. The Omega. Oh, oh, putting the O in Omega. <laughs> so they then go to the perfume shop and buy some expensive perfumes, but are still only at 900 euros spent. I hear that it's actually called Medusa's Massage Parlor, because by the end of it, you feel very stiff. At the end of it, you've got two stone heads. <laughs> and I really wish I hadn't... <laughs> I hadn't hinted at the happy ending jokes that were on my uh, my sheet because I knew that this would set you off. <laughs> I think I, I, that's the first thing I thought of when I saw the scene. 
You can't say, can you give me the most expensive massage that's off the books? No. What's the most expensive service you can give me in 10 minutes, which actually was the quote. (laughs) And we are obviously children. (laughs) Yeah. We would never be allowed in that massage parlor. <laughs> I, oh, that should be a challenge in and of itself. Go into that massage parlor and ask that question with a completely straight face. Hey, can you give me the most... With, and you don't have cameras with you. Like They had the benefit of having cameras with them, so the person behind the counter knew it was serious. But can you imagine me just going in there and saying, what's the most expensive service you can give me for 10 minutes? Saunders... <laughs> I can imagine you wandering into any random place and asking for the quickest 10 minutes of your life. (laughs) To quote another James Bond movie, you only live twice. So Bart rings and tells Alina to only count 306,000 drachmas, because that's 900 uh, euros. And as they bought perfumes, they've got to empty the bottles and end up just spraying it on Jolene's legs. And they decide to ring Alina with 30 seconds to go, just as she's defending the money that she's counted. You know how, like, in a lot of doctor's clinics, or, well, this is how it is in Canada, if you go to a walk-in clinic or any medical office, they say, thank you for not wearing any cologne or perfume in the scent-free environment, because others around you may be really sensitive. So uh, after this challenge, I wish they went into just some sort of room and have Jolene go in there and just get all of these really dirty looks and everyone's eyes just watering up and struggling to breathe. If you were about Jolene in this challenge, what would you have done? I wouldn't have been trying to get carpal tunnel from emptying out bottles of perfume. Now, I feel like going for something consumable is the obvious but far too difficult choice, because in the space of an hour they had at least two bottles of champagne that we saw, they had the pita breads which cost a massive 10 euros each, and they had the perfumes which they ended up having to completely and utterly destroy, basically, and empty over Jolene. Pretty much give her a perfume shower which is also one of the services Bart has asked for for 10 minutes in a match arts parlor. I feel like you just go for for purchasable goods. Like going to a souvenir shop or a boutique shop. Yeah, you go for the most gaudy fur coat or something to just get it expensive. Because the thing is, as you said, as soon as you leave your mole in that key position, you're never going to win this challenge. So it's essentially, you guys spend as much as you want taking out of this pot and have a fun time. Yeah, it's like you go into a boutique shop. Give me your most expensive fur coat. Excellent choice, sir. Here are, here's a fur coat made from the skinned cats of all the stray cats of Athens. It essentially becomes a Belgian mole version of Maclemore thrift shop. Yeah. <laughs> I got 2,000 euros in my pocket. <laughs> And then turn on the fans. <laughs> yeah, Lena really gets the raw end of the stick here. This is not a fun challenge for her. It's not a fun challenge for her, but as Mole, she's in exactly the spot she needs to be in. And that's all that matters. Yeah, I'm guessing that when the cat, or like, because of course they have to edit it for, this, for the episode, but I'm guessing like half the time she's probably making Dracoma angels on the ground. She didn't really have to put that much, really she didn't have to do it anything. She only had to do it for the camera so they could air this task on TV. Yeah, but you have to think about something else. She doesn't necessarily know when Bart and Jolene are watching on the above camera. Oh, right, there's that. forgot about the camera. Well, I mean, when she goes to answer the phone or something. I'm sure next week we'll see something of her making it rain or something, but yeah. as long as she is out of the view of that, um, that camera on the roof, she's probably pretty safe to mould as much as she wants. So Bart and Jolene spent 900 euros or 306,000 drachmas, but Alina counted 308,500, a mistake of only 7 euros. And that means that the pot goes down by 900 euros. But what? Alina sabotaged this? Who'd have thunk? <laughs> she was the one who screwed it up? I mean, there is a first time for everything. Like Bart and Jolene busted their asses sticking to what she said, And she can't count up a few drachmas? It's almost like she sabotaged. They didn't even get a massage out of it. I'm sure Bart got a massage afterwards. All they ended up doing is spraying perfume on themselves to smell like a Greek whore. So, the finalists check into their final hotel and spend the day relaxing there. And Bart admits that his guilty pleasure is reading trashy magazines and gives out their horoscopes. 
One of you will one of you will encounter great fortune. Oh, it just so happens it's my uh, star sign. Who'd have thunk that was going to happen? <laughs> so, this is now the time that I can finally say this. It's the challenge we've been waiting for, the Scott Flannery Memorial Challenge. Because their final challenge takes place at the Scott Flannery Memorial Bridge on the Corinth Canal. And as Jill is introducing the challenge, Scotty is still screaming three years later. And for the listeners who don't pay attention to The Amazing Race, they did this task on The Amazing Race 29, where the eventual winner of the season screams and screams and screams and screams all the way down at the Corinth, down the Corinth Canal, making the most terrifying scream you've ever heard in your life. You have never heard anyone bungee jump like Scott Flannery bungee jumps. In fact, it sounded like this. <laughs> the wonderful thing about Scotty's scream is that it A, doesn't appear in the actual episode, it only appears in the preview of, um, of that episode in the previous episode, but B, it fits perfectly with the Amazing Race theme. So if you are an Amazing Race fan and you've ever wondered why there's so much screaming in our intro music, that is because it's Scott Flannery screaming from this challenge. As soon as they announced they were going to Greece and I saw a bridge over the Corinth Canal in um, in the preview, I knew that this was a Scott Flannery Memorial Bridge. And it amuses him greatly that I call it that, by the way, because I've been chatting with him this week. But this would be probably my nightmare challenge. <laughs> I, I, I would be screaming too, but it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Hot for Dummer! Hot for Dummer! Lloyd! It's 70 metres high, that bungee jump, by the way. Ah, it could be higher. Right, that's it. Saunders, next time you go to Greece, you are doing this bungee jump. I want to make this happen. I'm I, calling I, your bluff now. No, I was I was serious. After watching the steps, I'm like, I really need to do that. Please do it. Please make sure there's a video, and please make sure you scream to the Amazing Race theme so I can change Scotty out occasionally. I mean, we all know how much I love Eastern Europe, and Greece really pleasantly surprised me when I went through the country. I was like, man, look at all these really, really cool locations they're going to on this season of the Mole. And it's not even major tourist attractions. Please do it. You know you want to. Because this is the Saunders promise where you go, yeah, I'll definitely do this on the podcast, and then you actually don't. I want to call you bluff and make you do this. Purely for my amusement. No one else. Okay, I have an idea. I have a serious idea. When borders open up, maybe even for next year for the Belgian finale, maybe we go to Greece first, do the current canal, and then we go to uh, the Belgian Mole finale in 2021. I am saying this now. There is not a chance in hell I am jumping off a bridge in Greece. <laughs> then you get to record it. <laughs> I will record it, but I am not jumping off this bridge. <laughs> there are only two things I would ever not do on the Mole. One is bungee jumping, one is skydiving. I would hate every second of it. Okay. But yeah, if we book next year. Yep, we'll make that happen. Even if it's not straight before the Belgian Mall finale, we will uh, we will make it happen. Because I really, really, really want to make you have to do the Scott Flannery Memorial Bridge jump. <laughs> so, as we said, Scotty is still screaming three, four years later, and the candidates don't know exactly what to think. And Jill asks first who is the most courageous of the three, and they say Bart, and he's sent off to jump first. He'll be hanging backwards off the platform on a winch and watching a video from home. He has to jump backwards and then shout the last four words of the video, first to Jolene, who will then relay them to Alina. Alina must then use a rifle to shoot the four words off the board. Each one correctly shot is worth 250 euros for the pot. If something is incorrectly shot and later forms part of another person's phrase, they cannot earn money from shooting it. And his four words are, love you, Dicker Who's Dicker is that, is that, is they Are they related to Willie Summers? Do you not remember uh, Dicker Bertha? From last year, take a Bertha? No, it was a uh, a children's game that uh, that they ended up talking about. I can't even remember why. Oh, it's really similar to another game that we actually that's it's a different name in the West, so we don't call it Dicka Bertha. <laughs> Dicka Cousin is just a uh, big kiss, by the way. Oh, I see. Okay, after see this uh, Dicka Bertha, and. Um, for some reason, Alina decides to completely ignore what Jolene says and shoot for I love you winner. Two of the words were correct, earning 500 euros for the pots. 
and Alina is next to jump with Bart in the middle and Jolene shooting. Her words are, you bent mine Vinner, or you are my winner. Bart heard it clearly. Him and Jolene realise that Vinner has already gone because Alina was sabotaging again. Jolene misses two of her shots, but two words are hit correctly, and they earn another 500 euros. And Jolene is last and most scared to jump. She is genuinely terrified at this challenge. She is as scared as I am of just watching this challenge. And as a special treat for us, we get to see Sasha again, and surprisingly, he doesn't appear in disguise because everyone seems to think he's still there. And her four words are Tutrap Hecklina. And Alina allegedly misses, but Bart guesses the correct four. Sadly, he's a crap shot and manages to only hit two in his scene scored by the William Tell Overture. At least there wasn't a watermelon, watermelon on top of it. And this brings their total to 1,500 of possible 3,000 for the challenge, 600 euros of a possible 25,235 for the episode, and a final score of 22,835 euros of a possible 118,635 for the season. I was surprised that Alina still tried to actively sabotage the final challenge of the game. Yeah, it seemed like she never really had an off switch with the sabotages. She was always constantly trying to sabotage, which I guess is kind of her role. But other moles have always kind of taken a step back towards the end and gone, they both know it to me, I'm just going to kind of maybe give them a chance. Yeah, like, with this, like, sure, the first challenge screw up when the with the money, to, the Durakmas, just to punish Bart and Jolene for uh, putting her in the room by herself. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, let's... And luckily she didn't go overboard with how much money... Uh, how many drachmas she piled up, because that could have been... She could have really, uh, really reduced the pot. So at least she it was kept to, like, a thousand being taken out. At least she didn't say, oh, I hey, hey uh, Bart and Jolene, I have gathered up 5,000 euros worth of drachmas, so you got to spend 5,000 euros. Oh, wait, I have 5,010. Silly me. <laughs> oh, no, Bart, how does this feel now? <laughs> and then... This final challenge, like we've seen, I think of say Celebrity Mole Hawaii with uh, Frederick uh, Vanderbilt or Frederick Vanderbilt, where she just decides, you know what, this challenge is worth seventy uh, thousand dollars. The both contestants know for sure it's me. Let's just, I'm just going to put forth my best effort to try and win this th- win this game. And look at Bill McDaniel's too, and the other uh, one American Mole seasons where the. He was the first one to get to that secret room where it was a hundred thousand dollars, and he where it's like you can either look at the most dossier, or you can put a hundred thousand dollars into the pot, and he decides to put the hundred thousand into the pot just as a, it's almost like a thank you for letting me be the mole for this whole game. Here's a little bonus for you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually a good tactic from a mole doing that as well because it's a last a last ditch attempt to kind of make them doubt their um, their suspicions slightly. It just puts a little bit of doubt in their mind to go, am I really on the right track here? And the thing is, Jolene came into this episode and admitted actually after she was announced as a winner that up until five minutes before the final test, she wasn't convinced it was Alina. Really? Yeah, she wasn't confident. That's the thing. Hmm. If Alina did sabotage that, sabotage that last challenge, that might have been enough to sway her to guess it was Bart then. Yeah, maybe. That's the thing. If if Alina had actually played like a contestant in that final challenge, I think Bart would have won, and I don't think Jolene would have un- unmasked the mole at all. That'd be crazy to think that Bart could have tricked somebody at final three into thinking he's the mole when I'm guessing a lot of contestants would have ruled him out on the first day. Hmm. That's basically what um what they said right before the final test was that a lot of people ruled Bart out initially, but should they have ruled Bart out? Yeah. I mean, I'm curious to see if anybody, if he did trick anybody at like Christian or Doreen or Salim near the near the end of the game. So everyone now gets a chance to call home the night before the finale, and we learn that Alina's dog had to go to the vet. That's literally all I learned in this scene. I'll be <laughs> honest. I was watching it. It's the the usual ringing home scene, like oh, I miss you so much, but they're only a day away from finishing the season. And it's weird because because they already had the messages from home uh, during the first challenge of the episode, or the well earlier that day in the Corinth Canal. 
yeah, because like a week beforehand, they sold their loved ones. Now we have the video messages hanging off the bridge, and then we have the phone calls home as well. I'm sure all of the listeners to this podcast are loving hearing us uh, tell them that a uh, talk about a contestant finding out that their dog went to the vet. That That is the expertise they want from us. The thing is, imagine if we were sat in the press room having to kind of work this out and go, this is entirely irrelevant for our uh, our podcast, I'm sorry. But then the thing is, my first question to Alina would have ended up being, how's your talk? <laughs> Can you... Every, every, like the Belgian newspaper that was in the press room, or the Trust Nobody podcast, and all the other groups, like... Alina, congratulations on being the bull. You did, a, you did a wonderful job this season. By the way, first question from the finale. How's your dog? You just overhear me going, how's your dog doing? Because last <laughs> we heard, it, it went to the vet and it wasn't well. I'm just concerned about your dog, sorry. I know this was filmed six months ago. And that's like, my dog, my, my dog died. So, Alina, so from, from these five minutes, this five minute scene, the one takeaway is that Alina's dog is in the vet. And now it's time for 20 or 50 questions about the identity of the mole. It's always weird covering the final episode because it was weird last year knowing basically that we had that hour and then we were going to be actually talking to the people involved. But it's always weird because they never do three challenges anymore. There's always quite a large amount of the episode that is who we suspect, why you suspect them, what your favourite moments were and stuff. And being honest, we can cut a lot of this out in our recaps. (laughs) And it feels really bad to say it because obviously they work so hard on all of these episodes. But... A lot of this stuff is irrelevant to me. I will be honest. (laughs) Because at least last, what was it, last year, they had, well, they had the big heist challenge that took a while. The heist was a big, epic challenge. Yeah, whereas this Scott Flannery Memorial Challenge ended halfway through the episode. The last half of the episode was the everyone ringing home and Alina finding out her dog wasn't well. It was everyone having breakfast with uh, with Jill and discussing their favourite moments. Then we had the test. Then we had why everyone's suspicious before the test. Then we had people actually taking the test. Then we had the results. And that was the episode. There's a big old bit of TV real estate towards the end of this episode where honestly not a lot happens in the game. Do you think a challenge was lost? No, I don't know. It's just weirdly paced. And it's not very... Belgy to pace it this weird, I would say. Like the first challenge is what it was like the first challenge you'd want for the final episode, like last year we had the karaoke massage uh, challenge. And then they have their super serious, like epic heist. Here, I feel like this current canal challenge would be something you would see in like like in the second or third episode where say, oh, you divide into two groups, four people are gonna do this game, and then four people are gonna do that game. That's what this current chal- uh, canal challenge felt like. Yeah, yeah, it, it didn't feel like a finale challenge to me. Because I'm trying to think of all the other final challenges they've done for Belgian Bulls so far. What did they do in Argentina? Argentina was the temptation walk, where two of them had to take the temptation for them to be able to get anything. The South Africa one was push the button to end the season. Push the button? Yeah, because they started the season with the push the button, first five, definitely get on the plane. And then they ended it with um, the final three in separate cars with the same buttons in front of them and a cash clock ticking up to 5,000 euros. If anyone took it, then the other two would go on a flight over the national park that they were in. If nobody took it, then all three would. Right. Uh, Mexico was not the gorge swing. The gorge swing was the first challenge of the episode. What was the last one? Was it the Chocolate Towers with the Voladores? I honestly don't remember. Um, And then Vietnam was the Pulp Fiction Challenge. Then this one was the Scott Flannery Memorial Challenge. Yeah, so I think this might rank uh, rank at the bottom of the five. Yeah, we are 100% not criticising this season at all. It's been fantastic again. But this episode was just a little bit weird. It started with the CGI. Yeah. Um, the the final challenge of um, of Mexico was the uh, the gorge swing, by the way. Oh, it was the gorge swing. Yeah. The chocolate landmark challenge was right before it. They were the two challenges. Hmm. 
So we begin day 19, which is the final day of the game. Jill meets them for breakfast at the port. They all discuss their favourite challenges. Bart reminds us that he's not here for the money, but to unmask the mole. Alina says the mole did well, with the pot being so low. And Jill ends by asking whether everyone is the mole, and they all deny it. One of them is lying. <laughs> but who? <laughs> and Bart says that he thinks he's an underdog. And Jolene is still not certain of her mole. She's 50-50 on who it could be. And the entire stretch, beginning with them walking up to the port where Jill is waiting, is punctuated by the ringing of a bell at the church, for which the episode title, spoiling it now, is going to be called For Whom the Bell Moles. <laughs> and it is now time for the final test. 30 questions on the identity and actions of the mole. Whoever knows the most leaves Greece with €22,835. Is that the smallest pot ever? Yes, very much so. Last year was 34,050. Uh, the year before was 27,665. The year before that was 27,250. And Argentina was 30,790. So it is by far the lowest pot. It's the lowest pot by a good 4,500 euros. That's a lot of money. That's a half a bit of pot. That is over 150,000 drachma. Bart may or may not be to blame for the substantially lower pot. Yeah, that's the thing. If Bart hadn't taken the temptation at the start, they actually, in theory, would have had the highest pot. In reality, they only actually would have saved about two and a half thousand euros because Bruno was the next with seven and a half thousand. But still, they would have had a chance at the highest pot ever. But in fact, they have the lowest pot ever. So the final test, of course, as we knew from the trailer, takes place on a boat, on a motherfucking boat, and as is traditional, they all have lights on their tables. Jolene says that Bart can say something right to your face and lie without a tell. He's been playing the game hard from minute one. Alina said it would be smart to make Bart the mole. He has charisma that allows him to completely blind you to his sabotages. Bart says that Jolene is so passionate you wouldn't expect her to be the mole, as she's so absorbed in the game. And Jolene says that she thinks Alina can lie damn well, and she's intelligent but appears naive. And she doesn't underestimate Alina. Bart describes her as a cheerful, playful young lady, although I do have to point out... That Google Translate changed young lady to hussy when I translated it. Oh. And her innocence is a good quality for a mole. So Google Translate is being very judgmental here. And they then run through all the potential sabotages that each other did. In summary, everyone sucks at everything. And the lights go out. Whoever's light switches on wins €22,835. Euros. And to our surprise, because I knew who the mole was, because uh, it got spoiled on social media, arg, I didn't know who the winner was. To my surprise, it's Jolene who wins. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, she herself is very shocked at this. Uh, she said she was unsure until five minutes before the test began. And she is the one to unmask the mole who comes across the boat, and much to our massive shock all season, it is Alina. And then they both start crying. Alina is very apologetic. <laughs> it's funny, I think of, say, like the how in the Mexico season, it's the the mole and the, and the winner were both men. Uh, for uh, for last year, it was uh, it was Elizabeth with mole and Axel winner. In short, this is the first time where both the mole and the winner uh, have both been women, and just how much hugging and crying and borderline making out were involved with this. Funnily enough, hugging and crying and borderline making out is the experience that you had with Davy at the finale last year. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> You set me up for that. I couldn't resist the joke about Davy. I'm sorry. But yeah, they just started kissing each other. It's like, wow, never have I ever, uh, Alina and uh, Shirley. <laughs> Both of them did drink to say that they'd kiss girls before. Like, I th how long ago was that champagne spending challenge? That was just that was just the day before. Is Jolene still feeling the effects from it? What they have at breakfast with Jills? But in the most Bart scene ever, he then gets to do the traditional second place walk of shame, comes down the gangplank, and pretty much trips his way onto the gangplank. I don't know whether you noticed this when he was getting off the boat, he didn't realise how high the uh, the side was, and did stumble a little bit. And he says that contrary to what he said for the rest of the season, he's just content with making it to the end. And they all embrace to end the episode, but not before we see a little of Alina's actions as Mole. We see her fake reaction to going, which is a wonderful scene that I hope he translated, because it made me laugh so hard. What did it translate to? So she did her, oh, seriously, face, and Jill's reaction was 
cut off, but now shown in this episode, he said, yes, you're the mole. It would be a little bit strange if you didn't come, Alina. <laughs> and Jill asked her in their private moment on the Penix whether she was going for a record low pot, and she, of course, said yes. She ends up hugging the Minotaur at least twice that we've seen, and we also see her record Bart's first exemption negotiation. And between her and Jill, they said that she was the mole a lot in this season. So... Next week, all of Alina's sabotages are revealed, the other seven and the finalist families find out the results live on Zoom, and we finally reveal the truth about what is coming up for the rest of the year on the podcast. We have our own little reveal. We do, and I've been teasing the fuck out of this for weeks and weeks and weeks, and we will finally actually reveal what it is the back end of next week. So please, please tune into the reunion recap, because it's going to be so much fun, and I can't wait to talk about it. Hans is replacing me as host. That's what's happening. Let's be honest, he's more talented. Although Hans has never tried to make out with Davy. I was going to make a pun using his name, but I, I'm, I'm not going to. So, in the predictions pool, as you might have guessed, thanks to my last minute steal, I am still undefeated. Get in. And in the first suspicions list, nobody picked Alina as their first choice, so inexplicably, Logan Saunders actually won it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as I said at the top of the episode and in last week's episode, welcome to the podcast where everyone is a winner apart from the listeners. And Bart. And Bart, yeah. <laughs> Bart, we can now say, is our loser. The last loser. There's nothing better. There's there's no shame in being the final loser. He made it all the way to day 19 and all he had to do was spend nearly a third of Jolene's money. I know, I was thinking, you know what? Really... If you take 10,200 euros out of the pot for an exemption, maybe it's not the right thing for you to win the season, If even if you were the best player or the first one to start putting Alina as your mole on the quiz. Yeah, but then it actually becomes funnier if Bart stole 10,200 euros of his own money. Oh, now it's just like the sad thing. Like, well, it's, it's a shame that Jolene couldn't uh, win like the fully intended prize for the season. So have you got anything else you want to say about the finale before we save our thoughts for next week when we do the reunion and season wrap-up? I'm very curious to see if Alina was as was as frequently guessed as a mole as we think uh, she should be, considering how much we were both guessing it was her uh, since the beginning. Well, no word of a lie, you had her in your top three since week one. I had her in my top three since week two. <laughs> And actually, our guess is pretty much lined up all season. There was only a little bit of difference each week. But Alina was always the common theme. Yeah, Alina is the only person who appeared in at least one suspect list every week. Which, let's be honest, was yours. Yeah, that's crazy. I have this crazy record with Belgian Mall. Yeah, it, it's really interesting because Alina, I think, is going to turn out to have been a really, really good mole. But for some reason, and I don't know why, we were really, really onto it this year. And it's something I think we have to think about in the next week before we record the reunion recap, because I'm not sure why we were so tuned into Alina. The other big thing is I'm trying to figure out what how I'm able to always figure out who the mole is. But you know, as a contestant, it's much tougher. I'm curious what the what that division is where I can see who it is clearly, but not the contestants who are actually living it every single day. Because Elizabeth, I, I, Elizabeth, I'm like, oh yeah, first episode, producers are totally going to pick her to be the mole. She's totally going to be the mole. And I was just thinking that right from the first minute last season. And here, it was more like 10 minutes before I had Alina as my one of my main mole picks every week. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're just really in tune with Gilles Costa. Well, we have that... <sighs> It's all, I mean, just with how much we've been focusing on the mole these past few years, it's like we have this idea of where the mole needs to be positioned. Maybe it's something that players, even after, you know, five years, because a lot of these players aren't listening to podcasts, they're not going through every single episode of every season internationally of the mole out there to figure out if, if the production picked the mole, how would they position the mole in every single scene? They're probably not thinking it down to that specific of a science. Well, it's a really interesting thing because this could play into German Mole, for example, because we've not actually discussed the fact that there is a badass-looking trailer for German Mole that's come out now. And German Mole appears to have the theme of greatest hits of Belgian Mole. I spotted challenges from um, 
Argentina, from Mexico, and from Vietnam in that trailer alone. Including, let's be honest, one of our favourite challenges ever, the um, the Elimination Paintball game. But they seem to be opening uh, in Argentina with the Mexican uh, coffin escape room game. And it's like, I wonder how much contestants from that season watched Belgian Mole and are aware of what the trick is with that challenge. And how much production will then change it just in case. Yeah, I don't know how many German contestants will have ac- access to Belgian Mole. I think they have to be pretty intense a fan, even with how close those two countries are geographically. But yeah, it's it's, it's really interesting. I'm obviously going to watch German Mole. Spoiler for next week. Officially, we are not covering German Mole because it's just going to be a little bit too difficult timing-wise and there's no guarantee there's going to be subtitles or anything. But I'm going to be watching it as someone with a little bit of German knowledge. And I'm going to be really interested to see whether I can pick the mole straight away because I know most of the challenges. So, thank you for listening to our Demol Belgium recap. We'll be back next week to conclude the Greek mole hunt. Don't forget, you can contact us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, where we are RTV Warriors. I can email us at contact at rtvwarriors.com. Logan is on Twitter at LogSuperQuacky, and I am MJ Harmstone. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out and just chill till the next deflavoring.